Hi guys, welcome back. This is Castlin and Always Acting Up. This is the podcast where I share my personal stories as an actress in the entertainment industry. We've got industry Q&As, secrets, behind the scenes, tips, all that good stuff that you've been wanting to know your whole entire life. This episode, I'm talking to a voiceover actor. He is an actor, a teacher, a writer, and he's going to tell us everything you want to know about voiceovers. But before we get into that, I want to give a special shout out for everyone who has been following, supporting this podcast. I see your comments on YouTube. I appreciate it. You're the best on my podcast Instagram page. And if you guys didn't know, I actually have a website now, which is alwaysactinguppodcast.com. You can also reach it at like castlinrose.com or blog. Wherever you go, you're going to find my information. So um, just for supporting, I have a special thing for you. This couldn't be done without you. I appreciate it. As I mentioned, I have a very special guest all the way from Pearl City, Hawaii to the internet entertainment capital of the world. Voiceover, improv comedian, teacher, a writer. You can hear his voice on Gary from Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart. Gosh, I, didn't, I know I'm not saying these right. Daimu? From Lost Judgment, and I know I'm not. I know I'm not saying this one. Min Minamoto, Minimoto, Minamimoto, but that's fine. (laughs) It's a tough one. (laughs) From the world ends with you, everybody. Welcome to my podcast, Brent Mackay. Hey, what's up, everybody? Please tell me I said your name right at least. Yeah, you said my name perfect. I was thinking about this. I was like, you know, sometimes you you like see people's name all the time and you talk to them and you're like, I just know you by Brent, but I yeah. don't actually like talk to your last name or people in their last name. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people think that they're not doing it right. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't. It's pretty. It's it's exactly how it's spelled. Mukai. That's great. E- yeah, I have a different name, too. And especially when people see it, they're like, Caselin, Caslin, 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 mm. Caslon. And I just kind of respond to any type of variation. I'm like, I get it. I get it. Um, it's close <laughs> enough. So how are you? I'm so glad we finally are able to do this. Um, I actually was planning on having uh, Brent on season two, but uh, schedules are a little crazy. And then I actually had to reschedule on him uh, just last week. And then we almost had a schedule uh, struggle just before this. It's hard, you guys. How are you, Brent? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing good. I'm I am really excited. Um, and I am gonna share with everybody a little sneak peek of your voiceover reel before we get into sharing all the deets about how to get into voiceover. Ooh. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Not nervous. Just like eh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy everyone. <sighs> What are you doing here this late at night? I must grow stronger so that I can fulfill my duty. <laughs> Lieutenant Ayabe here. Since the Eighth does have some experience in the Nether, perhaps you should split up and have a member in each unit. <laughs> Chain Nine Tails, you were born to be eaten. I can smell it. Mr. Lawrence, Mr. LaRusso, I didn't think you'd make it. You two are pushy little bastards, ain't ya? <gasps> Living cyclone! Yeah, that ain't the enemy, and it sure is that ain't professional. Quit making that dumbass face! We asked you a question! Then what the hell did you do it for, huh? Thanks for your help, Jet. It's nice to meet you. What's going on? It's time to shift up. I've got you now! So many fighters. That's so cool. <laughs> I was watching, I, rec- I have so many questions, um, but I was just watching your reaction while you were listening, you know, to your own reel. What were your thoughts on that? Like, is it, when you hear that, you're like, holy shit, like I'm a voiceover artist now? Like, what are yeah. your thoughts? It's always cool. It's like, oh yeah, that is crazy that I did all of those things. It's, I listen back and I'm like, oh yeah, that's me in a thing, in, in stuff. Like, that feeling's never lost on me. When I see my voice on like a thing and I see it all put together, you know, it, it it's incredible. It, it's just yeah. crazy to think about. And is that something you've always wanted to do? Have you like as a kid, like did you always do voices? Like how do you even know like that voiceovers, you know, it's an actual career? Yeah, I didn't know that voiceover was a career until maybe about six years ago. But when I found out about it, I was like, dang, I want to do this. I've always really wanted to do this but i just assumed 
you had to be famous first before you could get into voice acting. And then a buddy of mine, um, um, Dan White, shout outs, Dan White, um, was like, yo, yeah, I got to do this voiceover audition. I was like, what? I didn't, I thought you had to be like, you know, Kevin Hart or something before you could do that. And <laughs> apparently not. So um, he introduced me to a buddy. All of that uh, led to me getting training out here in Vegas. And uh, yeah, I took it slowly. As for when I was a kid, um, I don't know. I, I don't, like, you know, I, I did voices kind of. Like I wasn't like the class clown, like, making fun of my teacher that's like a lot of people's like mo of voiceover but i did like you know i watched the dragon ball z's and i watched all of the stuff and i would try to imitate the 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 voices that i heard and you know put on little shadow puppet shows and you know play with action figures and have different voices for them but uh, as far as i know that's that <laughs> that's not super uncommon that's not like oh you were bred for this it just sort of that that all sort of just was being a kid, you know? So I, yeah. I, I think that that was, I, I don't, I don't think that I'm necessarily special in that. I was like, I was always just voices and voices <laughs> and voices and this and that. I, I think I was just like a kid, you know? Yeah, actually. And I, I was curious also, cause I know you've, um, I, I know you've been in a short, uh, you know, another projects around town. Do you also do, um, I don't even know if you call it like regular acting with like your face in front of the camera. Like, what do we call it? Like, I don't know. <laughs> live acting, live action acting or on camera acting or whatever. I, some people get like offended or whatever. Like, oh, what do you mean? Are you implying that voice acting is, and I'm like, no, nobody's implying that. They just want a real, they just don't think of voice acting is like, yeah. so it's, I don't care what you call it. Yeah. I, I do a little on camera acting. That's where it kind of started out um everything okay. was I, I learned uh yeah i learned all the techniques for on camera acting and i was learning you know the method and all of that stuff in college um and then was was going around town trying to be in different films and whatever which at that time you know 10 15 years ago there wasn't that much uh you know there was there weren't like plentiful opportunities back then but i i got with a with a little indie film crew and then started kind of mm. working and you know learning learning some stuff and getting some getting some experience yeah and i and i was curious cuz i'm always wondering does your career as you know an actor i'm just going to do air quotes again as an actor for the camera or yeah. like theater acting training does that help you for your voiceover career or is it like kind of like completely different I think I it, helps. it helps. It all helps, right? So being able to access your emotions in a in a moment, learning script analysis to understand what's really happening, you know, like all of all of that stuff is extremely important. And being able to be in touch with your emotions, like that's very actory, right? Um, I would say though that improv, which is something that I've I've done very steadily for the last uh 13 years now is is much i don't want to say much more important but i think that it, it's i think that there's more skills that transfer over from improv than they do from anything else so are you are you able to do when you're you know doing voiceover for a cartoon are you able to like ad lib it all or it kind of has to be like perfect like word perfect so it matches up with you know the mouth moving and stuff for animation, I've heard, yeah, there's there's some leeway for you know for uh, uh, for improvisation. For video games, it's an exact science. They need to they need your voice to fit to a to a timing that's gonna work within whatever it is. For anime, it's especially that because they've written the words to match the mouth of something that's already been animated. So there's no there's none of that. But what but the what I mean by the skills that transfer over mostly, I mean the ability to get into character quickly to snap into whatever to to just to just go with no preparation cuz a lot of times you don't even get the script ahead of time um you know for commercials and stuff you you, you will do it and it's more short form but for for video game stuff like there's a good shot that you're not going to get the script before you're reading it um and sometimes you do what's called additional voices where you play like five or six 
ancillary characters and you just need to go you they'll just show you the character right then and there and you need to snap into something and have you know you, you need to have some kind of different voice for all of these different things that are going on so wow yeah it, very improv centric in that way in the in the skills necessary to do improv not so much exact improvisation mm. i mean i honestly have like a million questions but um I want to kind of get into it about how to get started. Yeah. Um, first, can you kind of tell us a little bit about all the different options you have as a voiceover artist? Because I think a lot of people just say, oh, voiceover is car cartoons, but there's so many other things, um, commercials and whatnot. Can you tell us what some other options would be? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. There's commercials. And then when you say commercials, you mean radio commercials, you mean television commercials, do you mean internet commercials? Do you mean corporate videos, like corporate narration stories that now corporate, you know, places, Toyota wants to have some kind of video for their homepage landing that, you know, tells the story of Toyota. Is that necessarily a commercial? Eh, it, sort of. It's for Toyota. I mean, it's, but it's more storytelling than it is selling, right? There's e-learning. Um, and within e-learning, there's all kinds. Is it medical e-learning for, you know, students? Is it medical e-learning for, you know, people who've been in the business for forever? Is it e-learning for kids where you're talking to, you know, you're teaching colors and shapes and stuff? Or is it e-learning on how to, you know, use this device that you just bought? So there's there's all of that. There's And then under the the, under narration it's like well what kind of narration is are you narrating like a documentary are you not narrating a a you know a, a, a video for that that's going to bleed into like the e-learning arena right and then there's video games and there's within video games there's mobile games which are humongous you know there, i heard toys yeah toys there's 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 AI that's coming out now. There's telephony when you pick up the phone and you call someplace and they, it's like, press one oh. for this, right? There's live announce stuff. And for live announce, like that's, that falls under a whole bunch of stuff. When you walk into the casino and there's a pre recorded message about how you should try out the steakhouse, like there's that. <laughs> there's, you know, live announce before the show starts and tells you to, you know, please silence all your cell phones. And then there's real live announce where you're actually there live for an actual event, which happens a lot in Vegas, where you're going up and, you know, you're you're calling out all of the graduates for the class of whatever and whatever, or you're naming all of the, you know, the 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 employees who have won awards over the past year for, you know, whatever corporate thing comes to town. Um you know, there's animation, there's also dubbing and within dubbing, wow. there's, you know, there's, there's animation dubbing, there's live action dubbing. There's also ADR and voice matching where, you know, it, it costs less money to bring somebody who can sound like the rock into studio than it would be to bring the rock into studio for an hour to record mm. one or two lines. Right. So mm. instead of paying, a hundred thousand dollars to the rock you pay a thousand dollars to or two thousand bucks to somebody that's you know whatever or whatever so th that can sound exactly like the rock because they need that for this commercial that they're cutting so th i mean movie trailers and promos on tv and it, it's just there's media everywhere and there's voices everywhere and a lot of people don't consider all of that stuff they just think cartoons and 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 video games or whatever but there's there's a lot there's a lot and I'm sure I've missed something too. I'm sure I've missed a ton of stuff that there is, but yeah. This is I mean it's bananas. Like I seriously had no idea. I, I literally thought it was like commercials and and radio, but I, I never even thought about um, you know, when you go to the subway and you hear someone's voice, like that's a voiceover too. I think I thought it was all computer, like computer um voice. Like the voice on TikTok, I recently heard that it was an actual an actual person. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was just a computer. But like, no, it was an actual voiceover actress. And um, y'all, she's they're actually TikTok was in a lot of trouble for this because they didn't get her permission for using yeah. her voice on a on a TikTok. TikTok, like come on, TikTok. You didn't like oh man. You got you guys gotta Google it. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm thing. I'm curious for people who are wanting to get started in voiceover do they need to sort of make a decision of like i only want to do this type of voiceover or is it where does my voice fit best how would that process work 
I mean, there's a few different ways, but I would say what I always tell people is like, figure out what you want to do, um, what your goals are, and then align what your choices you make are to that. Because it's like, if you just have a dying passion to be in video games, like, then go take a bunch of acting and improv classes, you know, go take, a, go, go learn a lot of those skills, like, because, because somebody might not be great at acting, but you can learn that you can learn how to do any of the stuff. So it's like, some of the things are like, okay, yes, certain things lean one way or another. But like, in terms of video games, sure, if you're if you're an 80 year old man with an 80 year old man voice sh you're not going to book as much because there's not super and, and you only can sound like an 80 year old man but there's going to be games where they need 80 year old men where they need something like that and why can't you be the guy that they contact when they need an older voice when they need a gandalfy wizard or whatever you know you can learn the accents you can learn all of these things so it's it's it to me it's like sky's the limit and 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 a lot of people put it in terms of like, well, realistically, what are people going to work and strive towards um, um, to to uh, depending on what they want to do with it? If you just want to make a little side income. Like, sure, find where your voice fits, figure out the best place. But I do think that there's something to like having passion for what it is that you actually are doing, you know? Yeah. And I think it's really great because I know a lot of people, they, they want to act and they want to do voiceovers. And guess what? You don't have to be in front of the camera at all. You can yeah. be, um, you know, turn your camera off and have your recording set up and, and still do all the things you want to do without having to worry about ugh, putting makeup on every day or hair or all these uh, really annoying things that I find is driving me bananas in these self-tape auditions. Like, <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, I don't know that life get up and do my makeup, do my hair. And so I think it's really great. I'm curious also, does this fall under SAG as well? Or do you guys have a separate union? No, it's all under SAG. Okay, they so just, similar. They just started a, a, a voiceover division of SAG too, like maybe four or five years ago. Mm. So you guys would have similar like pay rates, um, whatever a day player is, co-star, Guest star See, sort of that thing stuff like that. I don't really know because I don't really know. <laughs> I've never been on, you know, day player guest mm -hmm. rates and stuff like that. But, yeah, I'm sure the SAG minimums are pretty comparable for a lot of stuff. But, you know, there's a lot of work, and I'm sure you've seen it, too, within the film world and with all of that, that is gone non-union. Um, oh, gosh, yes. Like in everything. The same, right, in the same way. Because there's yeah. a lot of people that are independent artists, and it's sometimes harder to get a project going if you – do have to do all the SAG paperwork or whatever the, you know, whatever the reasons are, but yeah. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of the voiceover stuff is non-union stuff. I was also curious. Um, and I know during the pandemic, a lot of people were, you know, trying new things and looking for different sources of income. Did you notice that the market sort of became more saturated with actors or was there more work because companies wanted to still produce content and the easiest way was to have actors doing this at home. Um, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, when the pandemic hit, a lot of stuff changed. And I think a lot of uh, on camera slash, you know, theater, whatever, when everything shut down, uh, everyone was like, okay, how do I throw together uh, a microphone in my booth? Like, I'm sure everyone. Like yeah, if I was I on that side, I don't, you know, I, I would be thinking the exact same thing. Like, what the hell? Like, oh my God, uh, you know, <laughs> it's scary. And so some people applied themselves very well and, and really, you know, learned the craft and, and really, you know, went in. And I saw a lot of people that were, that I was like, wow, okay. Wow. You're like an established actor. You're like really you're, you're in this class and, and making those connections and all of that stuff. And then I'm assuming there's a lot of people who also just tried to, you know, do it themselves and, and with, with varying results, right? Because when you, when you don't have any guidance, it's like, well, you can find your way, but you can also just as easily not find your way. So, um, um, but yeah, I, I saw a ton, I saw a ton of people, a ton of people reached out to me about like, how do I, I do did. this? What a, yeah, exactly. And I, <laughs> I, I tried my best in that time because a lot of people reached out to like give my time to be like, yo, 
here's the thoughts here's the here's the processes here's whatever like if you have money go take classes if you don't like you can you can kind of do this stuff like uh, so uh, yeah 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 yeah. like definitely a lot of people came in but what the opportunity was that that came to a lot of us was that la and new york and a lot of these places finally for the first time opened up and were like yo so the people that were like me that i had trained in character work and a lot of that stuff and wanted to get into the la market and felt really prepared for it like it sort of really benefited me a lot because i was ready for it i had had my own studio and booth and had been working and knew all of the ways to connect in a lot of ways that people who were going into studio and never had to learn the technology part of it didn't ever have so i was already very proficient in all of it in the business side in the in the in the tech side especially and then i knew how to do the work so uh for people like me la and new york and all these places just kind of opened up and i was like okay sweet that's awesome preparation uh preparation meets opportunity and you were ready yes exactly and uh you know unfortunately a lot of other people weren't and and you know so that that there was trade-off there was trade-off to all of it i hear a lot of voice actor people being like oh all these actors are coming in and thinking that and i'm like there's always a trade-off of everything nothing is ever no different change is ever all the way bad or good usually in my opinion unless somebody is trying to just take stuff away but like that changed to me i'm I'm always looking for what's the bright side and what's the you know because it's everybody's focused on the dark side of it yeah everything's always involving so for somebody who doesn't you know they don't know anything and they may be listening like what would be like the first step for them to get started in voiceovers at different levels i would say uh if you're just beginning out and you, you don't know what to do Go take classes. Go take classes and go learn. Go learn. There's a ton of online classes. There's a ton of classes being taught. I teach at a studio called The Voice Actor Studio that taught me from the ground up how to create a solid voiceover business and and to work for myself and and to be an entrepreneur. Um, The tech side, the craft side, the, the technology side, it's a lot. It's a lot to have to to do. And when you're just, it, it's tough when you're getting all of your information off of forums or whatever, because uh, as awesome as it is that it's free, there's a lot of people on those forums who are speaking up and don't know what the hell they're talking about. And so Always. all of the good professional advice gets drowned out sometimes by a lot of the, you know, or at least saturated so that to a point where, you don't know what the hell you don't know what the hell to do. So you, so having a professional finding a reputable professional who's working in the field, who's who you check out their website and they're up to date and they're working today. Like that's a teacher that you want to have. And that's, you know, I mean, that's everybody at the voice actor studio. Everybody is fully employed by voice over. So yeah. it, it's, it's like, but you know to to that point i'm not here pitching classes and trying to sell that what i will say is wherever you are and whatever you do go look up the teachers also to make sure that they're working today and can tell you today what to do not what was trending 10 years ago cuz everything's changed i think that applies for i'm going to do my air quotes again like real er, like not real like in person acting classes as well i find that yes there's always going to be a technique but I, I do feel like we were just saying how things are always evolving. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times the teachers were working mm, maybe 20, 30 years ago. So some of the advice that they may be giving for new actors uh, regarding the business or regarding X, Y, Z, maybe a little outdated. Yeah. Know what you're going in for. Know what you're, know who you're, what you're, what you're in for. Mm-hmm. And I would imagine for voiceover classes, especially um, that's where you would find online classes especially because it's voiceover like you should be able to teach i would imagine voiceover Mm -hmm. classes online which is what you guys do as right yeah and uh, most places you know transferred over 
which is, you know, to, to doing it all it, online and doing a lot of it. And, you know, as I'm sure a lot of, you know, film theater, all of those acting classes also transition to online, you know, mm. 50, two years ago, no one thought an improv class online would have been possible or doable, but look at that just took a pandemic to figure out how to do improv classes online. So yeah, it's been bananas. So for the most part, um, I think with anything, getting in classes would be the most important thing. And most classes, would they pretty much tell you how to make your demo reel and like direct you where to go? Is that, would that be, I guess the next step was make a demo reel. So people, I mean, you have to, right? So yeah, learning, learning all of the ducks that you need to get in a row and then getting those ducks in a row and then, and then eventually working your way towards a demo reel, but doing it when you're ready, because it's a lot of money. And the thing is, if you're not really ready to drop money on a demo reel, like, then it's not going to do you a lot of good because the marketing and the whatever, like all of the stuff that you're sending out, like that's your calling card basically. And you don't want it to yeah. be lower uh, of a lower standard and not know it. Like, so you want to get to a point where you know what's good and what's not good. Right. Because everybody's like, well, how do I know when I'm ready for a demo reel? Well, you should be able to identify what is good work. What is not good work. Right. You, you should be able to identify like, okay, why you should be able to identify, am I doing good work? or am I, am I, you know, and, and what do I have to do to get better? And, you know, sometimes it's hard to know that on your own and coaches you can lean into, you know, as long as it's not somebody trying to take advantage of you, I guess, but like you, you want to figure out why, you know, why you're ready and, 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 and know like, yes, I am, I am ready. This is, it's time to spend the money. Cause it can be, you know, upwards of a grand or more, to, to cut one of these things and wow. uh it's tough to do it on your own if you don't have any editing experience or audio experience be and and people will know right away because they listen to all of these demos they they're, they're some of these people they listen to demos all day long they'll be able to tell if it's not professionally produced so it's sort of like one of those catch-22s of like it's tough it's really tough if you if you have editing experience and audio experience then sure it's tougher though to to put one of those together by yourself because it's like well also my brain is like you know it, it's the same thing you run into like when you're lot. trying to send in an audition or do whatever and you you overdo it on it right and so you're you're trying to balance that out so um your next step is you know your 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 next step is to learn all of the stuff and get all of your ducks in a row and then the demo is there and then once you have the demo it's like it opens some doors to be able to market yourself and get out there and, and show people what you can do. Um, but the number one step before doing a demo is being demo ready and, and knowing what that is. And in no way is that me trying to gatekeep anybody. If you're phenomenal and you're, you come from improv or acting and it takes you two weeks to get there, that's fine. That's wow. totally <laughs> great. But if it, awesome. if it takes you longer to get there then don't be discouraged by that and don't for the love of god don't spend that money before you're ready because there's a lot of people who are willing to just take your money and cut whatever for you oh yeah not you know and then you and then you won't know why you're not getting calls back or booking stuff and it could be that could be so get all get all of the ducks in a row like really get everything together is my suggestion yeah. And what do you think about, I don't know if they're considered pay to play, but I know that there are a lot of websites where you can pay a fee and then you can submit to auditions all the time and you yep. do get paid. Would that be a good way for people to start? Yeah. If you take a class on rating, take a class on rates and quotes, because you need oh. to know how to negotiate for yourself and you need to understand what you're what is ripping you off and what is not ripping you off because on those sites because there's no it's just straight from you know b2b it's it's straight from the business to your business you have to then know how to do all your own negotiation there's no agent stepping in there so you don't want to do a job and and accept you know 500 bucks for it when you could have gotten you know 
ten thousand bucks for it, or oh, or shit. it's or it's supposed to be ten thousand bucks for that job, right? Like you you want to be so so my my thing on the pay to plays. There's a lot of people who are on them very quietly. Um, I that's how I started, but I I when I one of the things in getting your ducks in a row is knowing the industry standards because a big thing that a lot of industry pros are afraid of is that these sites are going to eventually kill a lot of the other jobs. The way to avoid that is to properly quote every job and to to properly understand what the hell this job is worth and what the hell your time is worth for whatever it is that you're doing. So, wow. Yeah. yeah I, I hopped on, um, voices. So there's, so there's uh, voices.com voices, one, two, three. I even hear people, um, put their demo reel up on Fiverr. I don't know if there are other sites, but I think, I think it's a great way to build up when you are still new and inexperienced. However, I, I personally found, so I, I got it during black Friday. So it was, it was half yeah. off and it was, a little bit more affordable. Um, it was like $400 a year full price and I got it for like 200. So yeah. it's, it's a commitment for sure. But I found that a lot of the jobs said like a hundred bucks and I was like, gosh, it's, I don't, I don't know. I, and I'm still new. So it was taking me a very long time to record, edit, upload or export, upload this. And I was like, ah, this is not, not for me right now. I don't think I'm ready for this right now. And I tried it for a little while. Um, I got shortlisted for a couple, yeah. But uh, but yeah, a hundred dollars um, for the work that I was putting in. Um, I, I like money, and I it wasn't worth my time for the time being. But I think it's a great place for people to start. And I was also really nervous because I hear often about um, nar- voice uh, book narrations. AC ACX, I think is it called? It's called. Yeah, you want to know how to edit fast and do w- the work fast. Cause yeah. really your, how much you're going to make on that is dependent on, you know, how much you make hourly or whatever is going to be dependent on how quickly you can get through it. And it's tough. It's tough. So don't sign up for one of those books until you're absolutely ready. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a low point in my career, but I, I had to <laughs> drop a book that I was doing because I just wasn't ready and prepared for it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Audio editing, uh, uh, editing in general is is so time consuming. And I didn't realize how time consuming <sighs> audio tough. editing was. I didn't yes. know anything about it until I had this podcast. Cause I could do video, but I didn't know audio as like, you know, Adobe audition. I didn't really know anything about that. And I was like, man, like this is a whole new beast I have to learn. Yes. Being efficient at audio editing is, is huge. Hmm. Yeah. And I know uh, Brent actually has a gig to get to in a little bit, so we're going to keep this short and sweet. Really quickly, can you tell us some possible scams or red flags that somebody should be on the lookout for, maybe doing these sites or working with a client? I haven't ever run into any scams or anything like that. Like, I don't know. uh, I've seen some, but like... Get on with, I'd say get on with like a Facebook group or whatever and just be aware of some of the scams. But like some people, I don't, I don't know how you would scam somebody, you know, like, cause at the end of the day, what do they have? Oh, they have my voice recording these lines that they said and they're not going to pay me for it. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, all they got are some lines from me if it is a scam. But like, you know, if it's anything like, oh, you, any obvious scam stuff is is my thing like if they're like oh send us uh whatever and we can send you the check after you pay this amount like that's scams but that's that's any scam like don't Mm -hmm. don't pay any don't pay any money to to for for the job to get paid but you know these pay to play sites for the most part, a lot of them, you can look at which ones are reputable and which ones aren't. So protect yourself in that way. Um, some of the free sites, sure. I, I bet that there are some people who are saying, thanks for the voice I needed for this project and, you know, whatever. But I, that's nothing I yeah. ever ran into. I wasn't so on was Craigslist thinking- looking for jobs. Yeah, that would have been me 10 years ago. Um, yeah, I was thinking, like, what do you got to do? Like, send over your audio and then, like, put, like, some music over that or, like, 
Jocelyn Rose sample or something like that just so you can confirm that they're not going to steal your audio then they pay you then you could take it off I don't know yeah something you like can that. do you can do watermarks and all that stuff but to me that's just a pain in the butt that's what it was that's that's just a pain in the butt to me that's the word I was going for. And okay, so we're just going to do this really quick. So mm-hmm. first thing, um, go to classes, make sure you're ready. Um, your class will walk you through making a demo reel. You can begin on these pay to play sites if you'd like to. And then ultimately, once you're ready and you've built your reel, you can start seeking representation, right? For the yeah. most part. Yeah. Okay. There's no reason not to. It, I mean, direct marketing is one of the best ways to to obtain a lot of jobs and it's not even just agents there are rosters that you can apply to and and things like that like let's say a studio that that does production work right has commercial clients that come to them regularly and say well we don't we at the advertising firm don't want to pick who the we don't we don't have a talent roster do you guys have a talent roster and they'll say yeah we do so you can pick from you know, all of the people that you hear, or we can just do it generally if you give us the specs and then we can get you auditions that you can listen to. So a lot of, a lot of studios have that and like, you know, knowing how to reach out and, and which is why it's so critical, critically important that your demo is good because if you're sending it to audio engineers, they're going to know if it's produced well or not. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I also heard that people kind of go out on their own and they reach out to production companies and sort of pitch themselves, say, Hey, I have this demo reel. This is what I do. If you ever have a commercial or need someone to do voiceover, here's my information, contact me. And I heard that's yeah. a really great way for people to market themselves. And, and you don't have to pay an agency. And there are submission, <laughs> you know, there's submission pages on a lot of those sites that you can just go to directly and submit to. But yeah, have all your yeah. checks in a row. That's, that's kind of really thinking well outside said. the box a little bit. And I'm going to transition us really quick here, Brent. Hang tight. Yeah. Okay. So um, I like to end every podcast with a moment of positivity, something that keeps you positive, a positive quote, something that um, inspired you. And I love it when my guests share this information. So I'd be honored if you had anything to share with us. The one that I always love is dream like you'll live forever. Live like you'll die today. That's wow, I've never Dean. heard that before. It's James, James Dean. And it's not really James Dean. It's from a movie I found out. Here, I thought all these years that it was James Dean who came up with it. But he said it in a movie and he got credited for it. And I'm like, what about the writer? What? But mm-hmm. anyways... To me, what it means is, you know, um, there's another there's another way to put it, I guess, which is like which is like have have your big dreams and and and, you know, have the passion and the drive to real to to work hard at what your dream is in the short term, but have the long term patience to to understand that it's it's more about the journey than it is about the the destination because I see so many people trying to saying, I want to do this and this only. And I'm like, if you're too rigid, then it, it's, there's a good chance that you're not going to get there in the way that you're hoping for really love the process of it all. And, and, and work really damn hard. Like today's the last day, but you know, have the have the patience like it could take you for (laughs) it could take you a long time to do this would you still be doing this because that to me is like i don't know i like to frame it in in a way of like whoops oh oh hey uh it's castle and it's just me interrupting my own podcast so rude i know well i just wanted to let you know that always acting up podcast is sponsored by we audition what's that well it's the website for actors made by actors it's the platform where you will never have to struggle to find an audition reader ever again and the best part you can be a reader too where you have the chance to read with real working actors see what they're doing in their auditions see what their setup looks like all while practicing and getting better with your own cold reading skills oh and did i mention you can make money on there too say what Well, I guess it might be time for you to check it out for yourself. But before you do, make sure to enter in my promo code, ACTINGUP25, for 25% off your subscription for a lifetime. That is ACTINGUP25, where we can hang out and help each other with our own auditions. See you on We Audition. 
I like to frame it in in a way of like if this took you if if it was 10 years before anything good happened in terms of your dream yeah. would you still want to do this um because for me that answers yeah I don't I don't I wouldn't care if it took me 10 years to book a cartoon or book a whatever and that's how I knew like this is what I wanted to do mm -hmm. it's a classic uh it's a marathon not a sprint mm -hmm. I've, that was really great I, I've never heard that quote before so I'm gonna have to go and do some researching on uh who'd you say James Dean James Dean yeah Mm, very nice. Well, Brent, um, it's been fabulous. Um, I think we're probably gonna have to do a part two at some point in, in the future. Can you tell us how we can get a hold of you if somebody wanted to like contact you, uh, check out some more of your stuff? Like, how can we reach you? Yeah, um, at Brent Mukai, B R E N T M U K A I, on all social medias across everything. I don't check LinkedIn that much, though. Just FYI um and then i don't know if you want if you have any questions um if you want to email me direct you can go to my website fill out the form i have a little form there and then you can you can contact me direct that way or just message me direct on any of the social media stuff and are you teaching at voice actor studio yeah i'm teaching currently at the voice actor studio and boom yeah so if you'd like to find information on that go to the voice actor studio.com yeah. So cool, guys. Um, well, I want to thank you so much. Uh, you have a gig to get to, which is really great news. Always busy, always productive. And like we were talking about, if your teachers are working, it's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that 100%. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining you guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me know what you thought. If you have any additional questions, leave it in the comments below. And uh that was awesome. I'll catch you next time. Thanks so much for having me, Castlin. Thank you.